Welcome to VFanatic and today we'll be troubleshooting ESXi boot issues. On an ESXi install, generally there are two options at boot up that you can use to troubleshoot boot issues. One is the shift O and the other is the shift R. So how you get to access that is on the boot screen just before the uh, blue and gray screen comes up. Just hit the shift plus O or the shift plus R keys together and uh, you'll be getting a screen depending upon what options you've chosen. So if you choose the shift plus O, you have uh, a command prompt which comes up wherein you can pass on boot parameters and if you hit shift plus R, you have an option of rolling back the install that you've done. So for example, if you've installed ESX 5.5, .5, you've upgraded from 4. Uh, let's say 4.0, 4.1 to 5.5, in that case, you have an option of doing a recovery by place, uh, by hitting Shift plus R. Now, how that works is on a typical ESXi install, uh, there are two alt boot bank partitions. One is a boot bank and one is an alt boot bank rather. And uh, once you do an upgrade or an install, so depending upon whether uh, depending upon the uh, boot bank in use, the boot bank would actually be renamed as the old boot bank and a backup copy of the hypervisor is actually stored and if you press a shift plus R that actually uh, alternates the boot bank so you can basically roll back in time now during boot itself there are a couple of other things you can do for example hitting the alt plus F12 key on the keyboard will give you a, a, a running log set of the VM kernel logs so how that helps is, for example, if you're stuck on a particular prompt or in, for example, your hypervisor refuses to boot or it's getting stalled or you're hitting an error, you have an option of looking behind the scenes and getting to know exactly what's going on. Now all of the keys between Alt F1 and F12 gives you uh, options that you can try out. Alt plus F12, as I told you, actually gives you a rolling uh, look at the VM kernel logs and as to all of the options which are changing, all of the drivers which are loading and uh, the modules which are loading, the devices which are getting loaded. So if it's an install issue, for example, after an install you're doing a boot and then you're not getting anywhere, for example, it's getting stuck. In that case, the Alt F12 is the way to go. Now here you can see the rolling logs going on. The system has just finished booting in fact and we are at the login prompt. Now th there's some fundamental information you can get from here. It's running 5.5, .5. build number is right there on screen. The IP address you can get it from here. Right now I'm working on DHCP. And most of the options which are here is actually available if I putty into the system. But after doing uh, an install, if I try to log in using putty, uh, I will see that I'm not actually able to install, I mean log in. So if I if I try to log in, I'm getting a, a connection refused. The reason for being, for that being, is because on a default install, uh, SSH is actually disabled. So for enabling that, I'll need to log in with a default password. Now once I log in by using the default password, uh, the first thing I need to do is enable SSH. So for that I need to go down to troubleshooting options. And uh, there are two things I can do. A is I can actually enable uh, the default ESXi shell. And the second thing I can do is I can enable SSH. So how that, uh, how that varies is if I enable the ESXi shell, I can actually log in using uh, the console itself and if I enable SSH I can use an SSH client like PuTTY to log on to my system remotely so here I've just gone ahead and enabled both ESXi shell as well as uh, PuTTY and I'm just logging in by using the ESXi shell first so the username is root the password is the password we used during install and I've just logged in now uh, basic Linux commands work so CD uh, forward slash and then if you do an LS you can see the old boot bank the boot bank you can see the file system in its entirety and uh, also if I just do an exit from here that logs me out so in order to log into uh, PuTTY what I'll need to do is I'll need to basically open PuTTY now uh, for opening PuTTY I'll just need to double click on the PuTTY get the PuTTY console going and uh, 
I'll just type in the IP address here. So since I'm on DHCP, I don't think I'll be saving the IP address. So uh, because the IP address might change, so I'm not going to be saving it. Let me just uh, type it in directly. All right. Okay. So when I when I hit on uh, open, you can see that the first prompt which comes up is actually the uh, the basic. Uh, a certificate prompt which comes up telling you you're connecting to a system which is new which I haven't connected before so just accept that login as root and the password and you're logged in now the thing is uh, when you're logged into ESX and uh, most people actually log into ESX by using PADI uh, not only for basic management tasks but also troubleshooting and a good part of troubleshooting involves the logs so on ESXi, there are two places where the logs are stored. One is if I go to var log, that'll actually show me the logs on the current system. But then, if I want the archived logs, in that case, I need to go to another directory, and that's actually your var run log. Now, notice the difference in parts when I actually log in. So if I log into a var log, I'm actually in the var slash log, but when I go to var run log, in that case, I'm actually on the scratch partition. Now, for long time ESXi users, the scratch partitions is uh, the partition on which um, it's basically uh, a partition wherein the copies of logs do not get rolled over on a system reboot. And if you check between the uh, var log and the var run log, you'll see some of the logs actually uh, exist only in the slash var log but then there are some logs which uh, which also exist in the slash var run log as well now um, there are a couple of log files which are important from the from from the perspective of troubleshooting and as most of you would know the vmk summary the vm kernel the host d logs uh, those are the ones which we, uh, the VPXA of course, and those are the ones which we uh, look at predominantly. And then you also have the VOPD, you also have the VSAN traces for people using VSAN, etc. So here I'm going back to var log, and uh, in order to troubleshoot, for example, boot issues, uh, let's say you've installed the system and your NIC card is not getting detected for whatsoever reason. So uh, one of the things you can actually do is you can go to the var uh, log folder and you can gunzip the boot.gz. So once you do that, you can actually scroll through the boot uh, uh, messages. This is more like the DMESG, which is the Linux. And here it's called the boot, uh, is basically just called boot.gz, which you have to gunzip. Now again, you can use less um, to search uh, to open the particular log file, and you can search for keywords that you want to use. Since I'm more interested in the NIC card as an example, so I'm just searching for the word NIC. And if I just scroll up and down, you can see that uh, the NIC card is getting detected, and the drivers are getting loaded, and uh, so on and so forth. So. You can see this, uh, the link status, you can see the speed of the card, etc. And uh, and that's all, that, that's some of the things you can do in the boot.gz. Now here, one of the other things that you can do is you can actually get to the DCUI interface by using PuTTY itself. So here, I've just typed in DCUI and you can see that I've got the DCUI interface which has just popped up. Now this becomes, this is uh, slightly more, uh, it, it's slightly more essential in terms of performing system admin jobs if you want to actually achieve it without having access to the direct console itself. So here once you log in, you'll have an option of uh, all of the options which are there on the console screen is actually available to you via PuTTY. So you can restart management agents. You can reset system configuration, you can see support information, etc. And how you come out of it, if you need to make a change, the change is actually there. If you want to come out of it, in that case, the control C will actually kick you out of the session again. So uh, now uh, that actually brings us to a very basic uh, uh, in terms of troubleshooting 
ESXi boot issues and ESXi behind the scenes as to what all you can do uh, if if you're hitting an issue within an ESXi system either before or after install will not actually boot so these are some of the steps that you need to keep in mind and these are some of the things which will help you troubleshoot on a boot issue so stay tuned for further videos which are coming up which will talk in depth about uh, about the ESXi architecture and troubleshooting ESXi and uh, so this is vFanatics which I'm signing off right now subscribe for more and uh, to send in your feedback in the comments so uh, just let me know as to what all videos you want in the future and I'll see and make that happen thanks a lot guys thank you